Evening, everybody. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Chris, you're still on mute. Let me take you off. There. There we go. There you go. Hi, All Christina. Right. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself today? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. You know, had had the uh, the normal glitches that happen <laughs> on the first day, um, and just trying to get better, um, and uh, especially with um, being able to uh, follow along and uh, go live in Facebook, and that was where we we had our challenge. Um, oh, to connecting Zoom into Facebook. Yeah, um, so it, it's uh, not difficult. It just it was um, it didn't want to go and play in our in a, a group. It, it's okay with a page, but it didn't want to play in the group. So, oh, um, so we kind of were brainstorming that, and we're like, you know what, the groups, you know, I mean, it's not a bad place to be since it's all free anyway. That's so, right. <laughs> that is right. Very good. Yeah. So the more Hi, the Ruth. merrier. Ruth, you there? Ruth, we can't. Yeah. I did myself, but I didn't. Okay. Now there you go. Hi, Ruth. Hi. I'm coming in from Long Beach. Where are you coming in from? Uh, Kansas. All right. Lawrence, Kansas. So you're from Long Beach. Ah, I have been to Lawrence, Kansas many, many, many moons ago. And what did you do here? I went to uh, University of Kansas to run in the Junior Olympics in the indoor track and field facility there back in high school. What event? Uh, I was a uh, hurdler and okay. a 300 meter runner. Okay. Yeah. So I remember landing to this flat, wide open area where it was as flat as a level as far as the eye could see. Yeah, in Western Kansas, even more so that way. Oh, it gets flatter? Yes, <laughs> you were in Eastern. <laughs> oh, so boy. Chris, how do you guys know each other? Um, I think it was through Kelly, posting through Kelly. That's okay. right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm well on the West Coast in Long Beach, and Christina uh, reached out to me. I do a lot of strategy for pastors and clergy and practitioners. And uh, when she was talking about the summit she was going to host, mm -hmm. I think Spirit said, I hear you guys thinking about each other. That just sparked something there. And next thing <laughs> we knew, we were connected. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to step away just a minute because I think it's going to get dark enough. I need my other light on before this is over. Right now I'm good, but I'm afraid it may be. So I'll be back in just a minute. That's all right. Gives me a chance to make sure that I am continuing. <laughs> I'm continuing to get everything all set. So Same here. Let's see if we can't get it all to play. Of course, I'm getting the message. Low system resources may affect your audio quality. Try closing some applications. I'm like, I have nothing else open except Zoom <laughs> and Facebook. <laughs> Christina, I am so proud of you for doing this. Yes. Oh. Oh, well, well, thank you. Um, but oh. I'm, I'm very much a... Uh, imperfect action and I learn by the doing so right. um, it, it, it's uh, you know kind of can watch it but then you know get some information and it's like okay well let me try and actually that was a part of this afternoon is um, you know we kind of were talking about what's the best way to you know move people and you know for uh, both of you you had done uh, some beautiful bonus gifts, um, you know, for some of the participants. So it was, you know, hey, uh, let's let's talk about what's the best way to get those into the hands of people. And uh, so um, brainstorming that, and I'll and I'll close the loop with you guys. Uh, but definitely want to uh, to get those out since you guys so graciously have um, offered them uh, to to our uh, participants. So. 
Um, one of the things uh, someone else came up with that, you know, uh, I hadn't thought about, but it made sense was um, just the whole idea of passing on all the emails to you guys, uh, for those who, who uh, had registered uh, for, the, for the summit. And uh, I was like, that makes sense. Um, so, uh, so at the end of this, you know, there's, there's some cleanup that I'm going to have to do that I hadn't thought about. Um, but uh, again, it's the uh, kind of like what I did with my masterclass uh, last month, uh, you know, my launch equivalent. Um, it was uh -huh. kind of like uh, the first one and went very well. Um, I had only a hundred people, you know, at the beginning of the week and picked up another 30, um, by the, uh, end of the you know, week and, um, you know, in the response, uh, cause my offer was, uh, the pre-sale of my book, the pre-order of my book. Right. And, uh, so did, uh, $800, 800, $1,800, um, in uh, nice. pre-sales. And, uh, so... Um, but that was just the first one. It was like, no expectations. It's like, let's get our feet wet. Let's, you know, go through this process. What's it look like to go, you know, go free, free, free. And then, you know, um, you know, pivot and, uh, and make an offer. And, uh, so I picked up a small group of, uh, of 11, uh, ladies and also, uh, the, uh, the pre-sales for the book. And then, this was the next thing that was always kind of on my mind uh, was to do a, a summit, but it was always with the idea of, hey, let me do it um, in conjunction like with my book launch and I'll do it like, you know, because I'm in Fort Payne, which is, you know, 20,000, you know, people, but, uh, you know, I, I could go up to Chattanooga, but I have a lot of people that I know in Huntsville and down in Birmingham. Um, and so I was thinking for the book launch, I'll go and I'll do, you know, like a day, you know, kind of thing. And, wow. uh, and then of course, uh, COVID-19 comes along. So that, that changed everything. And, right. uh, and so, so then it was a, Hey, uh, let's look at an online summit. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm not leaving anybody out in if they wanted to, uh, come in. Uh, so I have to play pay attention to the uh <laughs> the participants waiting room yeah um and then i have to go and check in at the there we go it looks like uh, we are live and we are good um so when i did the master class i actually had uh set up my computer and attached it to another uh screen so it's like I had another big screen that was there, but I was actively teaching rather than simply talking and having a conversation. So it's like, well, if there's, if it's not just me, I don't feel rude if I periodically check and make sure that nobody has any comments or questions that they want to toss your way. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so, so that was what I was doing as I was bringing up the feed. And of course, you know, I get the low system resources may affect your audio quality. So let me know um, if uh, if there's anything. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll we'll kind of get at it. Um, I hear and, you uh, great all the way here in Long Beach. I hear you great. Well, interestingly enough, uh, my husband Paul was born in Long Beach. Uh, so uh, really, that was, uh, yep. But uh, that was back in 1946. His uh, dad was uh, still. Uh, serving in uh, in the Pacific, coming back from World War II. Yeah. And uh, so his mom was there at the Naval Station awaiting his return. And, uh, and that was where he was born. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we, we know Long Beach. Um, and uh, actually, Paul's dad uh, was uh, part of um, – uh, Cal Poly, is it? Uh, what What's the big high yeah. school football? High school, yeah. Um, so he went oh, there and then Long he, Beach Poly. Yep, there we go. Um, and uh, he went on to Cal. Actually, played um, and was part of the national championship team in 1938. Um, wow. There. And uh, yeah, so we we got roots out in Southern California, um, and you know, but we joke because we were in Colorado Springs for six years and all the Californians moved there and ruined it. So uh, we left. <laughs> it's 
kind of the same joke that's going on with uh, Texas right now uh, of people <laughs> saying that they're going to move from California to Texas and, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's just a, uh, a different perspective. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Chris, how long have you been outstanding. in California? How long, Chris, I'm sorry, how long Bruce. Chris, how long have you been in California? Oh boy, I've lived here all my life, Ruth. I was okay. born and raised in Southern California and did a few years in the Monterey Bay, which is extraordinary and gorgeous. And oh, yeah. if you ever get a chance, go up there. Um, Our uh, yeah. oldest son actually is uh, a prof at oh, that, the Naval Postgraduate School. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so cool. So, so we actually have a trip on the books for, for September. Um, and that would be the soonest that uh, we're thinking we're even considering traveling at this point. So we'll see. We'll just see what the shape of the world is uh, and uh, what, what precautions or I should say uh, what procedures yeah. and processes are put into place by, uh, especially by airlines and, uh, you know, and, and others. I mean, we could always make the drive out, but that's a, that's a long drive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a it's a little bit from uh, Alabama to get out here. Yep, it's a uh, it's a good five days. Um, oh you know, boy! Well, I mean, if, if you're not doing the uh, fourteen to sixteen hour days a couple of times, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it, it is it is forty hours, so it is a full work week. Um, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, I think everything is up and running, so I want to be attentive to your guys' time. Um, and, sure. uh, you know, so uh, just kind of, uh, you know, for everybody, uh, just as a reminder, I'm Christina Simmons, uh, and this is a Say Yes to Holiness um, Transformation Online Summit. Um, and uh, we're now here with Chris Trammell and Ruth Pierce, and we're continuing to have our discussions that we've had earlier throughout the day of how it is that we can be pivoting towards our best selves. And so as we're entering into the conversation, uh, go ahead and uh, Ruth, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself for our audience and then uh, we'll move on to Chris. I'm Ruth Pierce and I live in Kansas and I like to help people figure out who they are. Mm. That's awesome. And it's very important in a world where no one knows wh who they are. Um, <laughs> that seems to be a, a common issue. People think they know who they are, but then something like uh, COVID-19 happens and it becomes quickly apparent that they do not. Um, I shared in the earlier uh, session, and I think, Chris, you heard me say it, um, but uh, it was a quote that I come across that kind of uh, has, uh, I keep coming back to. Yeah, that was really great. Has shown us. Yeah, so uh, uh, Ross uh, McCammon um, and, uh, had written an article on Forge, and he said, quarantine has shown us what we are, but it's also shown us what we are not. And, right. And, and I think, Ruth, uh, you're right in that sweet spot of helping people be able to discover who they really are so then they can set aside who they aren't and then pursue uh, what is truly uh, fits them uh, and what's going to bring them true happiness and fulfillment. There were some really great, not that I want us to dive in, but I, I have a couple quotes written down from earlier's talk and oh, yeah. there is just a fantastic uh, conversational talking points and quotes that came out of there. And I did, I, I made sure I, I copied that one down. That was pretty awesome. Who we are and who we are not. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, definitely give you a, a place to start. So, Chris, kind of talk, uh, get, you know, let everybody know uh, who you are, what you do, and uh, and maybe uh, toss in why you do it. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, um, if I take off, it's because for 15 years I was a high school science teacher at the Los Angeles Zoo. So, uh, the ability to be in front of group and take over the room happens <laughs> that quick. And it's one of the things that I coach on. So who I am is, I'm Chris Trammell. I am the CEO and Chief Strategist of Seeds from Sunday. And we are a consulting agency made up of professionals committed to sharing the light of Christ 
And we do that by partnering with clergy, pastors, ministers, spiritual practitioners, sacred spaces, and social entrepreneurs that want to make a difference in this world. And we support them by giving them the tools, guiding them on how to use those tools to grow their membership, grow their revenue, and have the biggest impact that they can have uh, in their communities, regionally or globally, whatever it is that they're out to commit to changing and altering the world for the better. So that is, uh, in short, the, the business side of what I do, but the, the human side of what I do, most importantly, is sharing the light of Christ. You know, 100%, it is a light of hope, it's a light of goodness, it's a light of faith, it's, it's a light of what guides us forward, and um, that has become my mission in this world, and largely it became a mission also after being a hospice worker or a hospice volunteer, not worker, volunteer for about 10 years, and uh, those experiences that are had there transcend our world experiences, and as much as I love my science and that which I've taught, and I'm grounded deeply in science, I'm clear on what science is and provides and does for us, I also have a deep faith uh, in the light of Christ and Christ consciousness, and for me to be able to share that most effectively is to share those already on the ground out in their communities so that they can make the biggest difference that they can. Cause when one shines more shine. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. No, I mean, it is uh, so important and it's interesting um, because, uh, and I think uh, one of our conversations uh, we had before uh, we got together tonight, um, we kind of touched upon the fact that there is no uh, antagonism and there is no, uh, you know, uh, negative between science and faith. Um, they actually are, uh, you know, just two pieces of your lungs. So um, you need both. Um, and uh, so God gave us reason for, you know, for a reason. Um, and, uh, and we use it most especially within the scientific, uh, in the scientific world. And so, yeah. but um, that's a beautiful blend that you have. Uh, and it's yeah. so desperately thank needed in our world today. So. And, and you said it perfectly. And thank you for describing science and faith. I, I, would, um, I would say I'm deeply rooted in my faith and my relationship, my vertical relationship with Christ, uh, but the horizontal relationship to religions may be fractured and struggled at times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is a relationship that I have with science and faith. Uh, and I, and probably one of the iterations I have downstream is to start to share um, because I've really seen how maybe parts of this COVID pandemic, as we get in this conversation mm -hmm. of our best selves moving forward, I've really started to look at how our, our religion community may have not always embraced what science had and in the lack of a complete embrace, maybe missed the messenger and missed the models that were being offered to us that this may not have had maybe the same impact. Who knows? I'm just mm -hmm. putting it out there. But that's one of the explorations I'm doing right now with other clergy and pastors and interfaith ministries to start to really listen for, as we emerge newly, what is one more new conversation that we get to have? Because we do kind of get that etch-a-sketch clean slate to start to create again. And uh, that is where I'm deeply rooted and anchored at is having people come forward to create with that blank canvas. Cause really anybody, any pastor, any sacred space can come forward and people are going to listen for what are we doing? What's next? Right. Right. Yeah. And so it, it's, a, it's, it's such an opportunity. It definitely it's is. Great. And yeah. And Ruth, what you do definitely ties into that, you know, having that uh, kind of etcher sketch of a blank slate and helping people be able to rewrite. You know, so share a little That's bit true. about because I'm familiar with what you do, but uh, Chris is not. Yeah, I, I help people write their total life resume. Now, mm. You're familiar with a professional resume. And mm -hmm. I do that too. But this takes in the whole person. 
So you figure out what you're good at. And a lot of times it's things we forgot about. So it is like wow. that etch a sketch and you get to start all over again. And you say, what are my, what is my potential? What are my strengths? Wow. Who am I a great friend? What kind of life events have affected me? And then figure out how you're going to use those life events to go forward. Because sometimes those life events are negative. But we can figure out how to turn them around. Mm. That actually touches into the conversation we were having earlier today in the, in the previous session, uh, Ruth. Um, and, uh, and very much it's about uh, the acknowledgement that it is through our grief, it's through those sorrows that we are brought to where we can be truly transformed. Yeah. Um, and uh, if we're but willing to uh, allow it and to trust it. Um, and I, I think that's one of the things that I admire most um, about what you've, you've done, Ruth, is that you really cultivate an atmosphere of trust between you and the person that you're working with in order to really help them dive deep and to be able to kind of uncover those things that they might have covered up because, you know, they might have been passionate about it or they might have enjoyed it. But then somebody was like, oh, you can't make money doing that. You know, uh, better go get it, you know, whatever, you know, kind of degree. And, um, and, and I know that uh, in your very gentle way, you, you, you tease it out because I would see that when, when we'd be having conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So. And but where are you? Cool. Yeah, where where are you right now in what what it is that you're offering? Because you um, provided a couple of uh, free offerings for our participants that we're going to be making available to people. Um, and right. so, could you describe those a little bit? What it's the the starter resume, which is a beginning one where you can do mm -hmm. it and you can do it free, and it will. It's a fillable PDF. And so it gives you an idea of where this would go. Now, if you mm -hmm. do decide to work with me further, there's a more in-depth dip options that you can do, but this would give you an idea of what we're talking about, because this concept is just fairly new. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we think we got to focus on our career and not everything else. And mm -hmm. if your faith is important to you, which it is for me, it's going to be one of your most important relationships. Because mm -hmm. one of the things we look at is your relationships, your identities that you have and how they affect your priorities. Mm -hmm. And those need to align. So if yep. God is important to you, then make him your first priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and awesome. I, yeah. Uh, I've gathered, uh, Chris, from looking at, uh, at, at your uh, work a little bit, that that's very similar to what you do for uh, your leadership. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's, you know, spirit makes no mistakes. And Ruth is speaking the same language uh, in parallel. Mm -hmm. And in the work that I've done after coaching track and field for uh, 17 years, probably a little bit more, almost 20 just really understanding the word to world relationship that we can create and that we live in. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, mastering that understanding of, as Ruth was describing, personalities, um, I use Myers-Briggs, I use archetypes, I use everything I can to start to distill out of my practitioners, of my authors, of my clients, what's going on in their thinking, and also how to best be able to speak to them. So there's a lot of um, tools that we use, assessment tools that way. But most importantly, we're always trying to have people be mindful of their speak, right? Because uh, life and death lies in the power of the tongue, right? So when we're mindful of our speak, and, and I used in the video that I provided for this mm -hmm. online summit, oh, Christina, thank you for inviting me to be part of this <laughs> online summit. You almost got away without allowing me to thank you for that. So thank oh, you. No, not, not at all. It was great, especially seeing what your, what your video was about and uh, resonates in my heart, um, you know, because Gospel of John uh, has always, you know, been uh, very close to my heart. So 
but yeah. what you're speaking yeah. of, both of you, uh, of the word has power. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, why? Because God is the word. Um, yes. And, uh, so it, it's uh, we create by what it is that we say just as much yeah. as what it is that we write. Um, yes. And, uh, and far too often we kind of give ourselves a free pass uh, by what we say. Um, just because, and I'll be the first one, uh, you know, to say I'm, I'm one of those because I love my little snarky comments. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, so, but it took me a long time before I realized that, um, I was literally, I was killing the soul of the person that I was making the comment to. Um, of where I saw it to be funny, but I really was tearing them down and was not speaking words of life to them, um, you know, in that, yep. and in the context of saying that it was for fun, you know, oh, I'm just joking, you know, and it's just like, no, um, it, it's, uh, it's very similar to, uh, you know, disparaging comments about someone's reputation, you know, you, you can't mm -hmm. go back and repair that. Um, and so uh, it's taken a long time to get there, but it ties into, uh, I just wanted to share very briefly, um, have you ever run into the motivational core assessment, MCOR? Chris? I've heard of MCOR. Is that, okay. Is that the numbering? Is that where they do numbering one through nine? Um, no, it's uh, actually how they do the assessment is through the use of achievement stories. And this is why I absolutely adore it is because it is the power of the word of the personal story that somebody shares. And then you're asked questions about your stories. And those stories are not necessarily achievements that the world might look at, but rather they are those things that you you believe that you did well mm -hmm. and found you know found happiness in and gave you great satisfaction so yeah. um interestingly enough it actually rates in accuracy to be higher than clifton strengths finders so um, wow. so anyway it's it's been around for more than 60 years uh, uh sema um and uh, so um, you know, I, I, I can get you that, uh, both of you, that information, Ruth, you know, we've talked, you know, in, in passing, uh, you know, I've made mention of it. Um, but it is a, um, I believe it is such a phenomenal tool because of how the inner person is shared in which they're sharing their story. And we all know, especially being people of faith, that it is in the story of our sharing, that we find ourselves, we find who we are, which is what both of you do. And then by the finding who we are, we then know where we are in the story. But I tell a lot of people that if we deny telling our story, we literally are strangling the divine life within us. Mm. So that that's where the M core is so beautiful is because those things that we hold deepest in our hearts of these are the things that I found such joy in and, and gave me great satisfaction. And I think I did well. It's in the telling of those deep, you know, um, achievements that we hold in our hearts. That's when we find who we really are. Um, and uh, so anyway, but I, I, uh, I digress a bit. <laughs> So before we leave that, Christina, how do you spell that? M core. So M uh -huh. and then core, C O R E. So the motivational core assessment, uh, you can find it uh, online very easily. Um, but I, I can put you guys in, in touch, uh, you know, if that's something that, uh, that you want. In fact, earlier today, Joshua Miller, um, he, you know, who is uh, one of the founders of uh, the M core assessment, he actually was uh, the speaker earlier this morning, so uh, so so Josh Josh is a is a good friend. Um, awesome. And, yeah. So they're doing great work. I'll have to reach out to him after. 
Outstanding. Yeah, in fact, uh, Todd Henry just came on board. Uh, so are you guys familiar with Todd Henry herding tigers? Um, and, oh gosh, his, uh, he's written like three other books. But um, he's always focused upon, um, you know, how it is that our words and the conversations that we have, that's how we transform particularly our work environments. So, um, so Todd, Todd, I mean, that, that was a match made in heaven when I heard about that. And I was just like, yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and that's why I shared what I shared for, for this online summit was really in the power of language. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great to hear. And I look forward to looking at the MCOR um, achievement through stories. It just makes me think of, a, you know, Joseph Campbell and Edith Hamilton. Mm -hmm. The hero's mm -hmm. journey, right? It's exactly it's story. Yeah. yeah. Ruth, you were gonna say something else before we before we was there anything else there? I don't think so. All right, very yeah. good. Yeah. But um, you know, as a takeoff to this too, when we're talking about words, and I don't know where it's found in the Bible, I don't have an address. Maybe one of you guys can pull it out, but out of your heart their mouth speaks. So mm -hmm. those things that come out of our mouth, it's what we're hiding. What's dear mm -hmm. to us or what we're hiding. Yeah. Wow. I will find that. That's awesome. Christina, would you like for me to just touch on a little bit about why I shared what I shared in the video and, and uh, Absolutely. how I arrived there and make sure the participants get mm -hmm. that connection also actually you know what let me defer to ruth first i'm sorry ladies first ruth. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I, i'm gonna let you go and i'll follow you no problem uh so i'll read him back was, if he gets out of hand <laughs> yeah i'll keep it short and sweet you know it's your word your world and emerging from the pandemic as we talked about our best self right as mm -hmm. emerging with the powerful word to world relationship and right now what i've noticed in the pastor clergy minister spaces everybody is very appropriately focused on the mechanics of how do we do it how do we get mm -hmm. back together how do we you know really it's all about the mechanics and one of the things that is important to remember is as leaders we're also called to create the vision that we're mm -hmm. going to now start to invite people forward because our congregations are coming back to us looking for what is next. Right. And if there hasn't been a more clear opportunity for sacred spaces to create something new, to think about, well, we wanted to start this other uh, service time. We've wanted to start this other program, or even to complement the conversation you had earlier today about grief and healing, there's a healing that needs to take place within our communities, right? Because Very much. if it's not healing, it's coming out as frustration. It's going mm -hmm. to be, well, you wanted to do it that way when we we're supposed to stay inside. And I saw you guys out there. So there's, there's almost this space that we need to create conversations where others can stand in what we say that are safe and secure spaces. Mm -hmm. And it's a, also a great opportunity to create in language opportunities to be with other faiths, you know, these mm -hmm. interfaith conversations, because the, the pandemic was not singular to any one gender, race, color, creed, nationality. And mm -hmm. if there's anything that we could share in our humanity, it's now to have those conversations, right? right. So that's the big invitation that, I offer is for leaders to speak and it's almost at the edge of their comfort level because, mm -hmm. you know, I think most leadership stays in the narrow boundaries. So they're not going to ruffle the apple cart. And, but here they get to really create a new space and say, Hey, mm -hmm. let's try this and let's try this. And then people will find themselves inside of that conversation. It's, it's one of the things that I really promote inside of our coaching sphere is authenticity. It's the second thing that we bring on. First is leadership and really diving deep into the world of leadership and understanding the power of language and creating a word to world relationship that inspires others. 
And then two, being authentic, like truly <laughs> pastor, how was it for you? You know, sacred uh, yogis, wherever we are in this space, how has that been for you so that people are, are free to speak about how it has been for them as well? Mm -hmm. So they can be authentic. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think this, this little mechanism that we so resisted for so long, uh, there's almost like, hey, thank God Zoom was here. We, we swamped it. We caused it to have to uh, rebuild itself and go through its own paradigm shifts. But without these online platforms, how would we really have been able to create the dialogue that has connected us, right? So for right. so long, our word to technology was poo-poo technology, poo-poo. I'm not going to mm -hmm. use you anymore. I'm going to stay off of it. And now yeah. we see, oh, it's how we use it. It's what we say into it that makes the difference. Mm -hmm. And right. that's powerful. Very much so. Um, and uh, so uh, within the Catholic world in particular, there has been um, just an abandonment of our young people and, and especially um, in the digital world. And a lot of it was, you know, because of, you know, the, the sexual abuse, you know, scandal. And sure. people were afraid to step into that space because they're like, oh, oh, I don't know. I mean, if we're on social media, then we might, you know, be friends with a, a minor. And, you know, and, and it's kind of like we it was just something where we're so busy doing the things that we think were are important that we're not going to go and do this. And. Um, right. and, and we can see, I mean, all mainstream, you know, Christianity, uh, it's not just Catholics are, you know, the young people, young adults, they're gone. Um, and it's, you know, because we're not where they are, we're expecting them right. to come to us. But um, going back to the, the power of, of the word, um, you would have loved the, the conversation with Josh and, and my husband, Paul, this morning, because they were talking exactly this of, you know, that strategic, you know, laying yeah. out of the vision in order to do the tactical, you know, what are the yes. to do's that have to be. 100%. Done. And, and uh, one of the things that we've been blessed that our pastor uh, who is at uh, our church, he's been doing just a beautiful job. And one of the things that we have, you know, uh, pointed out to him is especially when this began, was just the fact of that idea of one voice. You don't have everybody speaking. It's got to come from you, and it's yeah. not a control thing. Rather, it's so that there is clarity and so that there is comfort and trust in what yeah. is being put out. So that that way, it's like, well, I don't know what to do. And now that we're you know we've just come back, we started. Um, you know, uh, we had services this last weekend and the weekend before. We we had people drive through holy communion that that was uh -huh. that was you know, <laughs> strange but um but into the midst of that it was like okay now's the time for you to kind of take it again and to be that one voice again and so mm -hmm. words and saying this is where we're going and then you know starting the conversations um and uh, you are so right you are so right so but um ruth you know, where, where are you uh, feeling that uh, all of this is, has brought you? What, what, uh, I know you guys were doing a trip just as this was kind of starting, and uh, you guys got home just before everything shut down? We did. Yeah. We were, wow. We're semi-retired. Uh, Tom is really retired, and so he wanted to do trips. Spring is when we can. We just got back from Texas. I mean, literally, the grocery stores were starting to have all their shelves empty as we came into town. So, but we have a really neat place on a lake. And so if we have to quarantine, this is the best place to be. So uh, it's been good great. for you. It's been great. And we can see how God has worked in so many ways in our life, even preparing us for this time. Mm -hmm. and God is good. And he's good all the time. Even when we can't see it or feel it, he's still good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's a super empowering statement. And I just, 
I want to share what I've captured from both of you right now, Ruth, when you said, you know, God is good. Really, like, you could say God is bad. And you're going to align with whatever you say in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. But I felt it. And I saw when you said God is good, there's an invitation to align with you in that. And that is really the awareness that we, we start to have. And the other part that I would just, when I think and I hear about people who have been prisoners in very harsh conditions and yet maintained a mindset of optimism, uh, you, you bring forward um, the thought where you said, hey, I'm on a lake. I'd love to be isolated here. There's no better place, right? But if we created language, wherever we are, I'm happy to be isolated, yeah. right? Like really, and, but that's the level that we invite as leaders to get people to be so mindful and aware of their speak to be like, oh yeah, because maybe not all of us can be on a lake. We haven't done the faith work in time, but I'm so glad and God is good right where I'm at and he guides me and takes care of me. Mm -hmm. And then when we share that, we increase the bandwidth. I only have this much in my Zoom window, so I can't do my arms wide. I can only go that <laughs> wide. But we increase the space of all those that we can invite to stand with us, right? Mm -hmm. Because we then become aware of like, well, I don't live on a lake, so it's not, no. All of us, wherever we are, are present to what God and Christ can do for us and what peace brings into our life. So I love, Ruth, I'm so glad that I, I get to participate with you and Christina at this moment. It's, it's right what I wanted to be able to share, which is really, you know, just looking at our words. And I imagine the work that you do shifts the whole words of vocabulary that you get back from your clients when you created this new life resume that they have that it not only shifts how they see themselves but now their whole language changes also yeah mm -hmm. and they do you know one of the things that i like to say is we help people find their potential mm. we find the intersection and if you think of three circles and they intersect we find that potential they forgot they had Mm. We help them find, you know, align their passions in there and then their priorities because mm -hmm. your priorities change yep. yeah. through your life. And so you're always realigning those three things. Mm -hmm. Your passions may change. Wow. And, and what you can do, you know, all of us should be growing all the time. And so your potential changes as you grow. You know, you realize it more as you grow. There's probably a better way to say that. Yeah. It's about having a skill set uh, rather than uh, being static. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, so that, that's one of the, uh, the great things that, uh, you know, all the self-motivation folk out there uh, from Tony Robbins to, you know, uh, any, anyone that you want to name, um, it's all about mindset first. And um, it's only when mindset has shifted that, you know, it's not, oh, you know, and, and, and being a person of, of faith, a lot, of, a lot, I know that a lot of folk will be like, oh, well, you know, that's not how it works. And, you know, and, and I'll be like, uh, no, uh, we speak our possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> and what we, yeah. And what we speak comes from our mind. Um, and so when I work with people, in order to, you know, so I actually talk about right orderedness um, mm -hmm. and uh, putting first things first, which is, you know, extremely, you know, uh, uh, biblical. Um, and uh, so when, when I speak of that, it's something where, um, you know, and, and they're looking at, like, for example, a, a behavior that they do not like. Um, and I was just like, there's three parts of this, <laughs> you know. And it's that cue, it's that routine, and then that's reward. And most often those, quote, behaviors we don't like is actually our way of rewarding us in some way that got skewed, you know, it's a disordered reward. And so as, you know, but we're looking at, I want to change this, and we forget the fact that, no, the cue is usually something that's negative up here, that then the routine then comes out. 
and you go off in a divergent way and then your reward just as a reflection of it was disordered to begin with. And usually it goes back to once again, what we're all talking about, which is knowing your true self and owning the reality that you are, especially if you've been baptized, adopted son or daughter of God um, mm. and precious in his sight. And once you know whose you are, Mm. then you're able to embrace the who, what, and where you are um, wow. and, and really living that out. So, um, but that, that's something that it begins with the word. It begins with all of those negative tracks that go around in our heads that it wasn't necessarily mom or dad, but we put them there or some, you know, get in the playground, put it there or, you know, whatever. So, I mean, I, I uh, you know, I was bullied all the way through middle school and then, you know, kind of, you know, excluded in high school. And it, it, it's a part of my story of where just fundamentally I was convinced that I was flawed in some way. You know, it's just like, why am I getting picked on? Why am I, you know, being excluded? What is it about me rather than recognizing that, no, it's someone else putting it on me? And, you know, but it took years to set that aside. And, you know, that's a part of what we have to do is that we have to fill our mind with Christ, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a put on the mind of Christ, you know, go out and, you know, be clothed with him. And, you know, that's the only way that that happens. And um, so I tell people I, I mentor and work with is like, hey, there's three pieces to this. So it's like uh, one of the four steps of holiness I talk to people about, one of them is, uh, you know, to grow daily in, you know, in virtue. And they'll be like, okay, so they'll set a resolution. And the key, of course, is a, is a small, concrete, doable thing that you do. So for example, if, you know, speaking snarky, you know, comments <laughs> is, is something, you can say, all right, today, I'm, not, I'm going to refrain from making snarky comments. Well, there's 10 different opportunities during the day. Nine of the 10, I make the comment, but one time I don't. Most of the time we'll look at it and go, wow, that was a really crappy day. But I point out and I say, but that one time you became more like Christ. Mm -hmm. And that matters. Yeah. So it's a matter of perspective and it's a matter of changing, but it's also, you know, you got to change the behavior, then you're changing the words, then you're changing the thoughts. It's all three that all roll together. And lots of times we try to, you know, we, we don't see the correlation, but again, I digress. <laughs> well, hold on to what you're saying there. It's the more that we allow God's spirit inside of us to mm -hmm. radiate out into our minds that we can do all that. That's mm -hmm. a lot easier to say than to do. It takes really digging into your relationship but i can so relate i like to talk mm -hmm. about the old ruth um, and i honestly didn't think that anybody would like me sort of like what you were talking about with the bullying mm -hmm. and i had god and i had to work this through and i had to receive from him that he chose me mm -hmm. yep. and that i was good enough mm -hmm. and in his eyes I am good enough and I have enough. And it not only me. that, you're beloved. Yes. It was mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and this is a story, but I had a special friend get a word from God, and he, she, he said, Ruth, you are God's beloved and you are worthy. Mm -hmm. And it wow. just happened to be right around Valentine's Day. So I just mm -hmm. wrote it on a note. And put it on my bulletin board. God's Valentine to me, and mm, I think it was wow. me. Mm, what a beautiful consolation you were given there! Wow. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And Ruth, what I love is how you framed it. Mm -hmm. God's Valentine to me, right? Yes. Like that yes. was created. There is no, there is no frame there. That was created in language to give you such presence. And for other people to be, I mean, you just enrolled me and enrolled Christina and how beautiful that is, right? So mm -hmm. as, 
as we all get more present to how we can speak and frame something with authenticity, with validity and, and true leadership, it's how we move our congregations forward. It's how we move our sacred spaces forward. It's how we get them aligned again and enlivened, pull them out of what has been so about the coronavirus. We, we cannot ignore the fact that we're continuing to move well past 80,000 80, plus of our brothers and sisters lost. Um, and what gift do we have as we, gosh, I, I so think about the conversation you had earlier today, Christine, about grief, but then giving ourselves permission after the acknowledgement of the grief and what so, and carrying them forward with us to create something new, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really, I hope that as many clergy and practitioners and pastors and ministers create something new right now. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wish I could be in every single office and listening and just pulling them out of the mechanics and say, speak something new that brings your community and makes you the hub of your community, of your region. And then you have to elevate yourself. You have to up-level your leadership because your language no longer serves you back at the way you were before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's actually the, exactly what uh, my hope is for this time, you know, for people. Um, and I kind of touched on it a little bit in my welcome video, um, but I spoke more about it in, in my own video that I, that I tossed in. Um, and it's that whole idea of to challenge assumptions, you know, to challenge those things that we think we're about. And then, you know, for us to rediscover what are those really core principles? What are those things that we truly say that we're about and to actually embrace them? Um, and, uh, and then uh, the, the language, you know, uh, go big, you know? Um, and uh, you know, so uh, it, it's a, uh, or, you know, the, the equivalent of do, do the moonshot. I mean, <laughs> talk about, I mean, shoot, talk about a shift in mental, you know, perception of what we're capable of. Um, I caught just uh, in passing, uh, it's, it's a beautiful movie, uh, Hidden Figures. Um, mm -hmm. It tells the yeah. story of the uh, three black, um, you know, mathematicians, female right. mathematicians uh, who were at NASA um, just before John Glenn's um, flight, and it's right. it's out there. I mean, it's so worth watching. Great movie. Um, it it is, and uh, but the scene that always I come back to is where, you know, they're they're talking about the fact of, um, you know, hey, you know, are we there? You know, I need you not to be thinking about how do we get there, but we're already there and you're like reverse engineering it, um, you know, of what's, what it is that needs to be done. And um, so it, it's a whole different shift of where it's not a, oh, gee, I think we can do this, but it very much is just as Jesus tells us, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, this mountain would pick up and it right. would move to the sea. And we, we all go, um, no. So, oh, so, so for me personally, Peter walking on water is the most powerful sign. Why? Because it shows and reminds me that when we keep our eyes completely fixed on Christ, we too can walk on water. I, I mean, that's the thing. So we then can become what I, you know, would I, you know, tell everyone I work with, we can be saints. We can be the living, breathing, wonder-working saints that we are reading about in the in the you know uh, in the Catholic liturgical year during Easter. We're reading the Gospel of John, and we're reading the Acts of the Apostles. We're reading about the early church and all of the miracles. And so often, everyone's like, "Oh, well, that was back then." And it's like, no. If you read for the last two thousand years, all the saints. Oh my gosh, miracles every single place you turn around. And it's simply because, just as you said, Ruth, they allowed the Holy Spirit to make of them an instrument and they spoke words of life over someone 
and it came to be. And, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, just awesome. It's really cool. What a beautiful message in the Easter season. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Ruth, so, what would you like to share before I, I add? I, mm -hmm. I know we're coming towards maybe the end. I don't know how, how much longer you want to go, Christina. I want to be mindful. So, Ruth, what would you like to share? I am just rolling with this conversation. So right now, I well, I do want to say one story. I feel mm -hmm. like I just tell this, and I don't want to dwell on it. But my mom was killed in a uh, car accident. And actually, it was right at this time of year, but many, many years ago. But I do grieve for her every year. And, you know, and I think because it was so unexpected. But even at that time, my dad had such strong faith. He said, mm -hmm. we prayed before we went. And this is what God had for us. Mm. I remember thinking at that time, even though we were grieving, they were, we were hurting as a family and still are. We recognized that God would bring something good out of this. Mm -hmm. What I noticed personally for me is my mom had a comfort zone for me. Mm. And she would have struggled with me getting out of that comfort zone. Mm. Not, not that I would ever have wished for her death. But I realized that was freeing for me to pursue things that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Isn't that wow. interesting that it's through the greatest of pains? Oh, yeah. Of walking through the greatest of griefs that mm -hmm. we find that freedom. And that was the conversation earlier. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that, Ruth. Thank for yes. that authenticity there and how that mm -hmm. makes a difference. Yes, it does. Yeah. And, you know, that reminds me of something, and it's very important to the audience that might be listening post live right mm -hmm. now is life is going to bring us what life brings us. And just because we understand, we're not saying some woo woo speak over your life and everything's going to become the Wizard of Oz. I'm making a Kansas reference for you, Ruth, right there. <laughs> um, but it is speaking a vision. It's speaking what we want to be in our future that causes us to then put in the structures and the actions mm -hmm. and the language and the inspiration and the allocation of resources that we can deliver on that future. And if the future is big enough and bold enough and bright enough that it inspires others, then leaders of, whether it's a small church, it's the big churches coming back, it's an archdiocese, everyone has the opportunity to recreate some part of their sacred spaces right now and mm -hmm. even the person listening at home could do this exercise of you know what can they still say about who they are coming as our best self forward like what can i count on you the watcher of this video to still be to the next human next to you that makes a difference in our world that has you walk in the footsteps of the way Mm -hmm. yep. And that makes that difference. Yep. It does by planning who it is that will be as we emerge from this, um, you know, again, grabbing on to what are our true core principles, not the ones that have come by accident because of what we've been doing before this. Um, and so um, my husband and I, uh, in fact, so uh, interestingly enough, uh, we did a family trip, and we all went down to Tampa. Um, we gathered, so uh, our, our oldest son and daughter-in-law came from California. Uh, middle son, uh, you know, came down from uh, D.C., and then uh, we came down uh, with our youngest son. Um, we all came down from Alabama, and uh, the reason we went to Tampa is because it was Yankee spring training. <laughs> so Yankees, you know, baseball and sports. Uh, we are in Alabama, um, so football uh, is huge. And we joke about the fact of with the absence of sports that we've realized that, you know, in many ways it had become a false priority. It mm. becomes a, um, you know, so it's kind of like, hey, we're kind of rearranging our day around when's the ball game rather than, hey, we can, you know, tape it and we can watch it later, you know, right. and go and do and spend time. And so 
there were a couple of things that I had jotted down that I was like, okay, these are the things, these are attitudes, which aren't necessarily, you know, uh, theological or cardinal virtues, but these are things that I think are so needed, especially right now. And it's boldness, that courage that you were speaking of to speak, you know, uh, something new authenticity, which you were just showing and sharing, you know, with us, Ruth, presence, being present to one another as, uh, as we, as we need to be to empower each other to do that and to do it with joy and love. And, um, you know, it, it, it's something where if we do those things, then we are going to live a life well lived. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people have been struggling with uh, in, in the midst of everything is that they've been, for the first time for many people, they've had to be reflective. Um, and they've gone, hmm, I don't quite like my life right now. Um, and, uh, and it's hard, it's painful, you know, to have that realization that we're not who we thought we were. But when it's done in a safe environment, mm -hmm. you know, when it's done in conversation of talking yeah. about what, what it is that we desire, then we have a place that we can transform. And that was, you know, my hope for this summit. Um, and, uh, and it still continues to be uh, that uh, at some point, uh, we'll, we'll all get to do this in person uh, and uh, be able to have uh, good meals and uh, good conversation along with um, spending time together and getting to know one another. So um, I uh, truly have enjoyed our conversation tonight. Um, any final words uh, that either of you uh, kind of have uh, that you want to pass on to, to our summit participants? Ruth, you first. I have enjoyed our conversation too, and thank you, Christina. And if this does ring a bell and you would want help, just let me know. I'm working on my website, it's still up going, but Ruth at RuthPierce.com is a good way to contact me. Awesome. Awesome. And I will be, uh, with your permission, um, I'll be sending out, um, and I'm going to wait till the end of the week so that that way, if people continue to join as they are during the week, that everyone who participates, that I'll be attaching your free, you know, offerings that each of you, you know, did, not just Ruth, but also you, Chris. Um, so we'll be sending those out as a after summit, you know, email. Um, and, uh, and then that's kind of us being able to, then that's the trigger for us to send you guys those, those email lists as well. So then you can reach out to them. Yeah, that's great. And just to share on that, um, yeah, I will make sure that we send the link to everybody who bought the uh, VIP all access mm -hmm. pass. And this is our, our symbol that we share. This is, I'll put a little behind mm -hmm. it. And it's our light, it's the light of Christ symbolically. I am the truth, the light, and the way. And this is what we use to give people hope as a hospice volunteer. It's what I use to leave behind. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of other churches use it, uh, as well as sharing their ministries and leaving it with some of their homebound um, congregants. So yeah, for everybody who bought the uh, VIP All Access Pass. That's my gift to being part of this. And for anyone out there listening, www.seedsfromsunday.com is where you could go to our website or email us and the team at info at seedsfromsunday.com. Anything from just like you talked about, Ruth, starting off at building the website to all the way through the go to market, or as we call it in our, uh, in our, spiritual space the return to community you know it's not go to market it's return to community strategies and we make sure that we cover all of those different spaces to guide people safely to where they want to be and whatever their word is in creating we'll get them there yes most awesome most awesome indeed well thank you chris thank you ruth it's been great uh conversation it's been just wonderful spending time with both of you Thank you for your willingness uh, to be a part of this uh, effort. And I'm really looking forward to having one-on-one -on -one conversations with you doing those interviews. And that's a, a whole nother reason uh, for people to uh, get the all access pass, not just to uh, get their Christ light, but also uh, because 
people uh, who do that, I'm going to be sharing uh, early access, all those interviews that we're going to be doing um, as we do them. So uh, awesome. another opportunity there uh, for people to come to get to know you and your ministry and what it is that you're doing in order to make the world a better place. Uh, and I personally think that's probably one of the best ways that we can pivot and uh, towards our best selves. Uh, Mother Teresa said, become the change that you wish to see. Mm. And uh, so uh, by us being attentive to ourselves, we then will be able to see the world that we desire all around us. So thank you again, everybody. Um, it was a great pleasure. And uh, we'll be talking again tomorrow. We uh, pick back up uh, 11 o'clock uh, noon time, uh, Eastern time. Um, and uh, we'll be doing this again for the next three days. So hope to see everybody there. That's great. Ruth, pleasure. Christina, thank you so much. Be well, be blessed. Bye-bye. You too. Good night.